that for a little change of pace on the music. Well, thank you, everybody. You know, when I was sworn in as speaker of the 100th session of the legislature, I told everybody and all our members, all 99, Republican and Democrat, that this will be the most difficult session that you ever served in. And why was this? Because we knew that the status quo was no longer acceptable. That we had to stop kicking that can down the road. That tough choices had to be made. So we set out to make those tough choices. And boy, did we get a reaction. Now I told my members that we were going to deliver on a conservative agenda. And I'm happy to sit there and list off that agenda that we ran on and that we were able to catch back the majority with last go-round because we had some monumental successes this last session. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> we were told that we couldn't balance a $3.6 billion deficit in one session. We not only did it in one session, we did it without raising taxes. And now the state is 150 million to the plus for the first time in over a decade. But we didn't stop there. We put in a permanent property tax freeze in the state budget so that property taxes can't exceed and go up the way they have been going for years. We also took on the trial attorneys and passed the largest tort reform that this country has ever seen. We decided once and for all, we wanted to have fair elections in the state of Wisconsin and we passed photo identification. We wanted to strengthen your Second Amendment rights and pass, conceal, and carry. We wanted you to have the ability to protect yourself in your own homes and pass the Castle Doctrine. I have a 100% pro-life voting record, but our best accomplish was we defunded Planned Parenthood. <laughs> now a lot of people ask me, Fitz, your speaker, you're doing a great job. Why do you want to run for the United States Senate? Matter of fact, a lot of you guys asked me that last night. <laughs> and can't you go back to being a speaker? I'm here to tell you folks, I can. I am running for the United States Senate because I got into this business because I thought the state was heading in the wrong direction. And now our country's heading in the wrong direction. And when politicians get comfortable where they're at, that's when states and countries get in trouble. So I've taken this leap for the United States Senate. And I'll tell you, it's simple for me. It's a simple message. The problems we faced in Wisconsin are the same problems we face on a national level. We need to get people back to work in this country again. We are no longer competitive in a global market. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the entire industrialized world. Next, we have the debt. The same way we face debt here in Wisconsin, we face a 15.1 trillion debt in Washington, D.C. Why? 
because they're spending more than coming in. It must stop. We must balance the budget. But it's going to take tough choices, folks. And you better have somebody who's willing to take on those challenges. To balance a budget at the federal level, we have to take on entitlement reform. The same way we took on collective bargaining reform here in the state of Wisconsin. When you look and see that Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and the interest on our debt by the middle of next decade will take up every dollar coming into the federal government, we have a problem. That problem is right around the corner, folks. We are heading for a financial and economic cliff. And we have to decide. We are in a fight for this country right now. Are we going to be the makers, or are we going to allow the takers to run this country? That's what we're in a fight for. When 50% of the people get their income from government versus the other half that are paying for it, when that number flips, we will be Greece, we will be Spain, we will be Portugal. We need reform now so that we don't have to rip the rug out from underneath folks like what's going on in Europe right now. We can do this, but we have to do it with difficult decisions. I have endorsed Paul Ryan's plan to get us back to fiscal sanity in this country. Now you've heard, you've heard a lot of talk, you've seen the video, you heard a lot of my colleagues, and I want to thank all my colleagues who stood up here and, and who have endorsed me. I have over 40 uh, endorsements throughout the legislature. I don't have any insiders from Washington that have endorsed me. I have all people from Wisconsin, all people from the legislature. But I'll tell you, I love telling this story because it gives you an insight. Some of you people have heard it, but I know some of you haven't. It was the Friday we were supposed to take up the collective bargaining bill. And I was sitting at my desk and the phone rang and they said, it's your brother on the phone. And I picked up the phone and said, what's going on? And he said, I think the Democrats just left the state. I said, what? He said, I think the Democrats just left the state. They said, call me back, that can't be true. He called me back, yeah, they left. I said, you know what, we'll take up this bill first. So I had to gather our caucus in and we caucus up on the fourth floor of the state capitol. And in the meantime, 30 to 40,000 of our closest friends had showed up. You know, you've, you've heard of them, very peaceful people, real good people. And we literally had to form a line of police officers to get up to that fourth floor. And I can't tell you the obscenities. They tried to spit on us, they tried to knock us over. I was thinking to myself, is this Wisconsin? Is this really Wisconsin because we ask public employees to give more toward their pension and health care? And we got up into that caucus and I said, guys, we got to go out on the floor and we got to pass this. And we got to send it over to the Senate. And we went out on the floor and about an hour into the debate, Capitol Security called me and they said, Mr. Speaker, we need to talk to you. They said, we are losing control of the state capitol. We can no longer guarantee the safety of you or any of your members. You have to be escorted out of here. Well, let me tell you, it had been a very difficult two weeks, and I knew I had the votes. And as speaker, you usually don't send people home for the weekend when you have the votes. And I recessed the session and sent everybody home for the weekend. And I remember thinking to myself, as I was waiting to get escorted out through the tunnels, that if there's any semblance of what's going on in this state capitol today is going on back home, I'm in real trouble. I will never hold these votes together. And that's where you folks come in. Because guess what happened? We went home and talked to individuals like you that said, you know what? Stay the course. 
You're doing the right thing. This is what we elected you to do. We went out onto that floor and for 63 straight hours debated a bill that fundamentally will change the course of Wisconsin forever. Now, when you see all the candidates up here, and I'm the third candidate to speak, Eric's coming up next. There's not a lot of difference between us when it comes to policy. We all talk about the debt problem. We all talk about repealing Obamacare. We all have the same views on energy policy. So what is different? What is different about the four of us? Well, I can tell you, I'm the only candidate I believe that's had a lot of death threats in the last 15 months. <laughs> on his front lawn. And unfortunately, my six-year-old daughter, who you will get to meet, saying, Daddy, they can't get in our house, please, can they? And having to tell her no. And I'm the only candidate that sat in a room with two other people when we decided to move this state in the right direction. Those three people were Governor Walker, my brother, and myself. But folks, that's the difference. To be a conservative has moved. I've seen it move in the past 10 years I've been in the legislature. And guess what? It's not good enough to say, I'm gonna go out and vote no on everything and keep my conservative record, and I'm a real conservative. That's not good enough. You have to want to lead people, like I led people as speaker, to conservative principles of less government, less taxation, less spending, and what our forefathers wanted to get back to the Constitution of the United States. So if you're looking for somebody to go out at the title of U.S. Senator, I'm not the guy for you. But if you're looking for a young Irish guy who likes a good fight, and I'll tell you, we like a good fight, the Fitzgerald brothers. There's a reason why they call it Fitz Walker Stan. <laughs> then I need your support today. I am running a grassroots campaign. And this nomination will go a long way. I need your support today because we need a fresh face to go out and make Ron Johnson the senior senator from Wisconsin. Now I'm gonna introduce the most important people in my life and the real reason why I'm running for the United States Senate. There's two reasons. Their name are Jack and Lauren and my wife, Andrea, if they could come out at this time, if they could get out of that curtain.